Yo, wait, Guan Chong, Wan Sha Hao. Oh, wow. I'm going to destroy everyone's ears. Um, let's see. Go wait, Guan Chong, Wan Sha Hao. We're going to play Wan Xian Jian Qi Xia Zhuan Si, or as we know it in English, The Legend of Sword and Fairy Four, or otherwise we know it as Chinese Paladin Four. Anyway, so this is finally here. We are starting a new game. As you can see, this is in not in not Shadow Hearts, unfortunately, because we have finished that game, and that means we are done and moving on to the Legend of Sword and Fairy Four. So the way it's gonna work is, if you've noticed, the text in this game is "Hi, Illusion Queen." The text in this game is indeed in Chinese. So. If you're wondering why you can't read it, if if you are a Western viewer, there's a very particular reason why. This game was only released in Chinese, and it's currently the only way you can play the game. There is no fan translation as of right now. This broadcast so sad, right? So the way this is going to work is that we are going to try to. Oh yes,、yeah, so it's also the game with the best soundtracks. Oh, it's this is your favorite. Yes, that's right. You've told me ahead of time, and I'm already actually I'm actually not technically blind playing for this early like about two hours or so. Like I know most of the story up to a certain point, so I'm I have seen it before. I, it was a while ago though, so I've made sure not to look at any media about this game for a for a while. Also, my voice should be at about ninety percent of what it normally is, so if it sounds a little strange, so. That's because it. I am still getting over something, but otherwise I seem to be okay. Anyway, so about this game in particular, unlike the previous games, this is, game was made in is Taiwan, right? Technically, right? Yeah, I believe this is made in Taiwan, and so this is Chinese developed. Hello, Tiger. Welcome to the stream. <clears throat> wow, I'm just apparently I can't squeak today. Those high notes are turning, turn my voice upside down, and I know that some of you have to, who normally stayed late for the show, hard stream, may have to sleep earlier. I think Tiger and Angel are both gonna have to sleep earlier today, so they'll just watch us for a little bit and give us our support as we start. So this game was made by Softstar, who also made, who will go on to make the the games that are currently out, which is both. This game came out in 2005. Was it? Wait, when did this come out? Actually, um, let's see. That's a good question. Oh yeah, you know, I also forgot that I have to bring out my. Wow, for the first time in a little while, I have to actually bring out a Chinese dictionary just in case. Oh my gosh. But anyway, this game was made by Softstar. Development is in Taipei. It was made in 2007. Yes, thank you for letting me know ahead of time. And you know what's the great thing about? I don't actually have to look up the Chinese name for this game because I it's right there in front of my face. Isn't this track nice? So this is the type of game we're gonna be going after. In case you're not familiar with this genre, this is called like the magical warrior. This is called Xianxia genre. I know, fancy seeing me here. I know. Anyway. This track makes me want to cry. Well, it is actually a really nice one. Hi, Angel Girl. Welcome to the stream. So yes, it was released in 2007. I mean, let's we'll set our expectations a bit.、Um, I will say, okay, we'll get into the game and I'll talk more about it. But anyway, as you can see, I'm just gonna go through the menu options really fast. This one allows you to see previous. This is called like, like your dreams from your memories. And this ch shows you like all the videos you've seen up to this point, including this is called the title opening number one. I'm not gonna translate every single thing, and I'm not gonna talk to every single NPC because that's gonna take too forever. But one nice thing about this game, unlike the previous games, is that it was voiced. So that means I actually don't have to read it; I can just hear it once and then translate it to you guys. And this is just like they have even have the credits available to you right now, and you can even go to the website. But I'm not gonna bother with that. Anyway, this is just like information about the game. This one is called like the the secrets or like all the history of Shenzhen, the history of the game series in particular, like how it started off in 1988, the original version of the game, 
off the first game. Hi, KevBot. Welcome to the stream. Do I even actually have a summary for each game? The Legend of Sword Fairy 1, 2, 3, and 4. This is called the, the story of Xian Jin, the story of, of the Fairy Sword. The world of the Fairy Sword, you can actually read all... This is like the gigantic details and lots and lots of... Um, and like this is some this is about the secrets of the ancient swords, which I don't want to go into. We'll bring it up whenever we get to. You can tell like there's a bunch of like uh, supplemental information, and this is just this is actually a Q and A for Xian Jin, the fairies, Legend of Fairy Sword. Hi, Kevbot. New game. Ooh, for every game now, we're gonna carry over the chant from Shadow Hearts. I actually have to tr translate the entire thing. Ugh. So yeah, we'll, we'll translate only the things that are most relevant to you guys, because I don't think you want to sit here and listen to me rattle on about everything. This is called The New Beginning. This is called The Old Memories, and this is to leave the game, but we're not going to hit that button pretty much ever. Alright, let's go ahead. Before we do it, we need to take care of the Q&A. This is called the Q&A for Legend uh, Fairy and Sword. Yes, it gives you extra items when you start the game. So, this is the interface for the questions. So in this interface, or this menu, there are going to be three three questions related to your knowledge of the of Sword and Legend of Sword and Fairy. <coughs> Excuse me. It involves a lot of knowledge invo involving the series. And every time you answer a question correctly, you can then, uh, let's see, get get a prize. Related to something to a, for your new game, as Illusion was saying. So this one says like for Saw Star. Let's see. What was the first? Let's see. How do I say this? What was the first first martial arts warrior RPG that Saw Star made? Obviously, it would be the first one, which is called The Legend of Sword and Fairy. Yeah, The Legend of Sword and Fairy One, uh, the DOS version. Obviously, there's no reason to. Anyway, Illusion Queen already. We already looked up the answers ahead of time. So I'm gonna go pick it the DOS version. Done. This one's actually pretty tough. It actually asks, how long did it take to make the DOS version of the Legend of Sword and Fairy 1? Uh this one is actually quite hard if you didn't I didn't know this, so it took two years and four months. This is actually like about standard for a game development cert. Um, process. Thankfully, the other two are like, yeah, making a game in six months is like really, really hard, and ten years is just an insane amount of development time, and that's called Duke Nukem Forever. But no, we have a standard time. And anyway, this one says, uh, the the DOS version that caused a great stir inside in the industry was released. At which in which year? It says 500 BC and 2001 and 1995. Well, obviously, come on. <laughs> there is only other one other way to. There's one only one one answer. Come on, guys. 2001 is way too late in the series. This actually might actually trip you up if you only knew that the the Windows XP version existed, which would be 2001. That would actually be the correct answer. 1995. Up to this point, uh, let's see. Uh, what is the... Up to this point, like, what is the side story... What's the side story game in, this, in the Legend of Sword and Fairy series? Obviously, it's the Legend of Sword and Fairy 3 side story, The Questioning of Love. Which we did play last time. That was our previous Legend of Sword and Fairy game we played earlier this year. So the the legend of the new legend of sword and fairy, which is one, which is actually the version we played on Twitch. Um, how many version? Uh, which of these? Which of these were the two versions that were released? Um, I'm pretty sure there is no English version and Chinese version. How sad. So anyway, there is only two versions. You can either get the Yueru version or the Ling'er version, which are the two girls in the series, not in the series, in that particular game. If I Ling, Linger and Yueru. So you could actually have two versions of the game based on which girl you wanted. Let's go with that. With the, yeah, so basically the 
creation of in the development of the Legend of Sword and Fairy DOS version, how many, how many, the, what was, how many people did it, the development staff start off with? It's one person. That's actually quite a trick question, actually, because like it was concept for one person's idea. This one is kind of rough. This one's kind of like trivia. So in 1999, which product from the Legend of Sword and Fairy series was developed? I did not know there was a Sega Saturn version until like I looked at these. That's pretty tricky too. Sega Saturn version. Yes, there's actually a Sega Saturn version. I almost want to boot it up to see what it looks like. I have access to a Sega Saturn too. We haven't had an opportunity to stream a Sega Saturn game yet. Uh, the newest work in the Legend of Sword and Fairy series is indeed the fourth game. Come on. In this case, in this, it's the fourth game as of this game. So, because you're playing the newest game, you silly goose. All right, who's the developer for the Legend of Sword and Fairy 4? Uh, let's see. Shanghai Ruanxing. High Crownless Hero. Yes, Shanghai Soft Star. So this was developed in Shanghai. So I always... Yay. High Crownless Hero, welcome to the stream. We're answering questions. One of the greatest characteristics in the Legend of Sword and Fairy series is... Um... The, the story moves people. Uh, the rest is like, nah, that's not it. And the and the characters are really funny. Nah, that's really not not it. This this series tends to be funny sometimes, but it's not always funny. It's more about the moving stories, the pain, the emotional pain. Oh, you're so awesome! You got all of them correct. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and go through the stories. It'll be quick. I'm sorry, but I don't want to st slow us down. So, what was the most thing? This what was the most heartbreaking thing in the Legend of Sword and Fairy One? Uh, the love, the love triangle between Li Xiaoyao, Zhao Lingyue, and Ling Yue, Lin Yue Ru. I think that's the best. I think that's that sounds about right. The ambitions of the. Okay, we'll we'll just give you the translate the correct answer. Otherwise, we're gonna be spending all our time doing this. Hi, Lord Tear. Welcome to the stream. In Shijian 1, Xia Li Xiaoyao escorted uh, Zhao Ling'er to... For what purpose? To go to the Hunho Miyue... No, 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 no. We're not going to honeymoon. Uh... Uh, the, to escape disaster? No. To find her mother. Yep. I remember this. To find Ling'er's mother. In the Legend of Sword of Fairy 1, the... Let's see. What was the method by which the Lin the Lin family helped Lin Ye Ru find her find her husband? Uh this is called It was called You Have to Beat Her in Battle with the Martial Arts Um The Martial Arts Matchmaking Tournament. I know it's kinda weird. Game's weird, man. Chinese culture is weird. Well Chinese martial arts culture is weird, man. You wanna get a wife? You have to beat her in combat. Okay. The Li Xiaoyao in the Legend of Sword and Fairy 2. So sorry, I will have to scroll up just a little bit, just to make sure. I'm not getting this wrong. Oh, okay. He had already become the leader of the Shu Mountain Guild. Sect, basically. In the ending of the Legend of Sword and Fairy 2. Wow, this is huge spoilers. Uh, let's see. One of the female leads, uh, Su Mei, uh, she had married Wang Xiao. Oh, no, that didn't happen. She became a fox again because she used her life. She sacrificed her abilities and her cultivation to save their lives. Cool. What is the title, of the theme of The Legend of Sword Fairy 3? Wow, this is like going back to memory lane. Oh! Reincarnation, man. Reincarnation. Lun Hui, which is reincarnation in Chinese. In the beginning, in the opening of Legend Story of Fairy 3, let's see. The demon lord, the great demon, uh, Chong Lo, uh, destroyed what? He destroyed the, the Lock Demon Tower. Yay! 
Or actually, it's the lock monster tower. Yeah, you're right. Never mind. I don't know why I hit th demons. What was this? This is not demon. So the Shoe Mountain Lock mon Monster Locking Guild, uh, Locking Tower. In the Legend of Sword and Fairy Three. Man, this is like going back through all the Twitch streams. This is like a review session. <coughs> Uh, the Sword of Felling Monsters and the Demon Sword. Yep, those are the ones that were entangled with um, with the destiny of the main character Jing Tian. Wow, this is this is like review. Um, the monster realm that appeared in the Legend of Sword and Fairy Three side story, the Inner Shoe Mountain, was located in the heart of Shoe Mountain. The heart of Shoe Mountain, or the center of Shoe Mountain, if you want to be a little less dramatic sounding. Oh, Dragonfly, you're here. Wow, it's been a long time. <coughs> you missed all the previous streams. In the Legend of Sword and Fairy 3 side story, Ci Yan's tragedy was... began with... Oh, a false marriage to um, to a lady, which was actually used to capture, mo used to trap a monster. Basically, it was used to trap him because he was a monster, and then he got locked into the locked monster, the monster locking tower. Hooray! False marriages are cool. No, that that was kind of a dick move on their part, but they didn't have any. I mean, they believed that all monsters were evil, and they needed to get thrown in the tower, even though Ci Yan was. Certainly not evil. Oh well. Things happen. Alright, we got it alright. Alright, next set of questions. Next questions. The Legend of Sword and Fairy. World of... Uh, of Xianjian. World of Legend of Sword and Fairy. Oh my goodness. This is a long questions and answers. Okay. Oh, when the beginning of the story for the Legend of Sword Fairy 1, um, the story of Li Xiaoyao, what was this, our first impression of him? Uh... Oh, uh, no, that's not right, right. Oh, yeah, he got hit. He was a... He was a dreamy... Uh, a youth that day... A daydreaming youth that was... That was awoken up by... By a pan from his aunt. Yay! Smacked in the face. Let's see. So, in the Legend of Sword and Fairy One, the Meow <laughs> girl from Meow, uh, Anu, like what was her mo her greatest skill? Uh, casting poison insects. That's correct. I was like, what was it again? Nah, her her specialty was poison insects, including a summoning a, a bee summoning spell that was very very useful in the late game. Ling Er from the Legend of Sword and Fairy One, her her position her position in life was indeed extraordinary. She was the descendant of Nuwa, yay! Or I guess the descendant of the tribe of Nuwa. That is probably the more accurate way. Boom. In the Legend of Sword and Fairy Two, let's see, Shen Qi Shuang. Wow, the main the second the main character, the quiet girl. And the other four four women, they were called the uh the Xinxia Wu Qi, is that correct? Yeah, it's been a while. Yes, the five wonders of Xinxia, that's correct. Like she was like they were like five girls and they were like all had they were all very very powerful. It's too bad four of them are get killed by a certain dude. In the Legend of Story Fairy 2, the Buddhist monk Chen Ye in actuality was he was a arch villain da fan pai yes that means that he's the arch he was the he was the orchestrator of the entire plot it was kind of a surprise too considering he had we had no reason to suspect him until much later in the game where it was sort of like oh i'm the bad guy oh really seriously okay the main character of Jing Tian of the Legend of Sword of Fairy 3, his most powerful skill was... Sajia. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
Let's see, his accumulating wealth through unfair means. Yes. It is this one. It's using using dirty tricks to get money. Yep, he was a super thief. That doesn't sound like a hero skill. Oh, it's not, but that's our that's our main character for the Legend of Sword and Fairy 3. Tang Xuejian from the Legend of Sword and Fairy 3 had the same appearance as the goddess Xi Yao, and it was because Oh, this is a fun one to explain in in a short sentence. Um She was created in the image of Xi Yao from the tree from the seeds of the divine tree. That's just the best way, best way to describe it. I actually described it to a bunch of people before. It's kind of it's actually a bit spo a big spoiler for that game, but I mean, if you're watching this, you you should be prepared for spoilers from previous games. In the Legend of Sword and Fairy 3 side story, uh, let's see. There was up. Oh, let's see. Oh, let's see. A, a, tra a boss of tragic na of a tragic nature appeared, and he was. Uh, it should be this guy, right? Liao Zi, yeah. Oh, not King Bolo. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's, there's like a the Pineapple King, but no, not him. It was the the Lord of Inner Shoe Mountain, Liao Zi. He was um how unfortunate for him. <laughs> a guy who lost his memories. I was just trying to reclaim them back. It's actually very sad. Is there anything not sad in this game in this game series at this point? Alright, the Legend of Sword and Fairy 3 side stories, main character Nan Gong Huang. In battle, he was able to turn him transform into a frog! No, that's not right. He was able to transform into a wolf. Wolfie! So he had this like wolfy look. And like I think we we were all joking that it was like this was like, is this Inuyasha or something? Anyway. That's an anime in case you don't know what that's from. The five poison the five poison beast through the power <laughs> through cultivation can give birth to the five poison pearl. Seems legit. Is final frog transformation a Final Fantasy reference? I guess so. Alright, we're done. Alright guys, sorry for slowing down the stream just to play get some items, but we might as well start on a good foot, right? Okay, now without further ado, we should have everything we need to begin the game. Let us begin with a new beginning. So enjoy the FMV. I won't comment too much on it. Let you soak it in. This is the health warning. I don't need to translate this. Soft Star, who made the game. The questions give you additional items at the beginning of the game. Shanghai Ran Xing in uh, ancient script. That is called Yoshi Tian Tang, which means the game heaven. And uh, that's more. All right, I'll move the pointer off. Nvidia. Nvidia. I'm just hoping the game doesn't crash too much. It's crashed once already during a test stream. All right. Just to set the tone of the game, there's certainly going to be shenanigans like in almost every opening. The FMV graphics are not amazing, but they're they're good enough. But they're kind of sloppy for 2007 standards. But it's China's development scene hasn't ha at this time hadn't quite caught up to the rest to Japan. Oh, I'm sorry, Lord Tear. It's okay. I will heal you with the power of Guan Yin. Anyway. So a summoning ritual seems to be taking place. The two swords brought bring about this is probably either a good idea or a bad idea. Sorry, the, there's been a bug with the FMVs that where sometimes the sound just cuts off for no reason. So please bear with us. I have no idea how to fix it. Hmm, these are some interesting beasts that have come up. They look pretty strong. 
Can these guys take him? Nope. Nope, they can't take him. So these beasts are pretty strong. Looks like even these my these warriors can't take on them yet. They're actually running away. Oh! But it looks like an elder or some or somebody who was able to take on them. And there's a, a demon woman with the long fingernails and an, an interesting outfit. Sorry about the oh the sound there. I don't know what this woman is capable of or who she is. She's most likely from the demon race, but we don't know anything about her yet. Not all demons are bad, even despite their name. I'll tell you more about the six races as we introduce characters from each. Assuming the old man is probably either the old man's an immortal or immortal or he's just a or he's of just a really powerful human. Or he could be an immortal. Immortals are like it's sort of like a hierarchy, really. Alright, we got to injure her. Alright, old man, we got this. Uh-oh. That's not good. I feel like I'm commentating sports or something. And she's dead. Right? He looks pretty satisfied with that. Or not! Something's behind you! Old man! That's the Legend of Sword and Fairy 4. It's funny, but while some humans are more evil than some demons... I know, that epic beard joke. Ho ho! <coughs> He's like, I got this! No, you don't got this! That The words on that say Yun Tian Qing, which is a name. Yun is the... means cloud, and it's his last name. And Tian Qing is the... Um, the first name. I guess it's like blue sky, sky blue is the best way to say it. Alright guys, welcome to the graphics of 2007. Well, it's on the low end for 2007, but it's China. They haven't quite caught up in development at the, as of this time yet. And this is our first time playing a game with voice lines, so let's get into it. This little... This little mountain pig here just says oink. Alright, this is our main character, Yun Tianhe. His name means it's like Cloud Milky Way. Is this the way to his last name is Cloud as well, Yun? And Tianhe means Milky Way. It literally means like Heavenly River, but that means Milky Way. And thank you, Illusion Queen will also post a nice explanation of it. The name of a mineral. I actually didn't know that. Yeah, so everybody in Legend of Sword and Fairy 4 is named after stones and minerals. Alright. <coughs> Father. <laughs> Father, you're <laughs> I know I've I know I've made it I've done wrong. The little pig oinks. <laughs> I shouldn't have been I shouldn't have overslept and I shouldn't have missed the the time the hour where I was supposed to burn incense. But you know, now that we're talking about this, all we have to all I have to blame is that is that stupid pig is that not stupid pig, sorry. Is that mountain pig for screaming so much? And it made it so that I made it the that so that I couldn't sleep until it was really late. And then when I fell asleep, I couldn't wake up. Anyway, so this is I'm gonna use a more casual voice for Tianhe because he's not talking. He's not a nobleman of refinement. Can we name it Bacon? Roger Bacon? Your Chinese is pretty bad. I only understand like 10%. Hey, it's all good. Listening as you listen, you'll probably pick up on more stuff as you get used to it. <sighs> Oh, spring has already passed. I don't even know why they're they're scree shouting so much, screaming so much. It's just going. <laughs> so yes, the the pig oints. 
小猪，小猪，小肥猪，你叫再多声熬夜也没用，马上把你烤熟了当贡品。<笑> little pig, little pig。